Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering interconnecting Cisco network devices, part one, or ICND one. This is part of the exam 100 to 105. We're moving on to the section 1.3 that says, describe the impact of infrastructure components in an enterprise network. So we need to describe what is a firewall, what is an access point, and what is a wireless controller. So what is a network? The term network is used in many different arenas, like for example, social network, phone networks, television network, and computer networks. So the network is a means of connecting various components together. So for example, if you have a device here, so let's say uh, this PC here, wants to communicate, it doesn't want to communicate. Everything that you need to do is on that PC. You, all the files, everything you need to do is on that PC. And that PC doesn't really need the network. But as soon as you want to share the documents, for example, you want to print something or you want to share something with their server, then you need, when you connect these two devices, that creates a network. So a computer network connects PC, printers, phones, and other type of devices so they can communicate with each other. We, the network can be as simple as just two PCs connecting together. So if I connect, for example, this PC with this server, that's it, just two devices, that creates a network. So minimum, two devices, sharing data. Maximum, well, there's no maximum. Or you can have several thousands of devices that are connected through many different types of media, i.e. internet. Internet is a network of networks. We're connecting all the networks together. So major devices or major components that you might find in the network are endpoints. So you have to be familiar with the term endpoint. These are the devices that we as a user communicate with or touch really. So these elements include devices such as PCs, file servers, printers, tablets, and cameras, as well as you can see there the laptop. You can see here a laptop, IP phone, and so on. So these are the devices that we use or we can communicate and they are endpoints. Usually the traffic on the network starts at the endpoint and finishes at the endpoint. So usually the, ser the source of traffic is the endpoint device and the destination is the endpoint device. I say usually because sometimes you can, you can, the destination can be the switch or the router. Interconnections, these are the components that connect the devices to the network, cables, wireless or fiber and so on. They provide a means for data to travel from one point to another in the network. So we do need the network interface card. So we need a NIC in our computer for it to be able to translate what do we want to send all the data in the network. So the network interface card is going to take our data, is going to, is going to translate it to something that is going to be able to send it from one place to another. Then we have to think of the media. How are we going to transfer that data? We have three types, for example, cable, which is a copper, wireless, or uh, we have a fiber optic. So copper, wireless, or fiber optic. And then connectors. For example, we have to have a proper connector for proper cable. So if you have a RJ45, that's for your normal copper cable. Or a straight ST or straight tip, that's for fiber optic cables. Then we have the switches. The switches is the ones that we they connect the endpoints. They connect the PCs to the switches and the transfer or the switch, the frames from one net from one place to another. Typically when the devices are connected to one switch they can communicate they can communicate with each other and that's usually it's called common network so if the two devices are connected to the same switch usually they are in the common network but if the computer wants to communicate with another computer in a different network then they have to go through the router and the router is there is separated in the network so you can see that side here is a one network and this side here is one, another network, two networks, and this side is another network. So if a computer wants to communicate to this, to this laptop, for example, it has to go through the switch and then to the router and then to the other network, the second network. Then obviously the routers. These are the devices that connect networks and intelligently choose the best path between the networks. So they can learn the paths. So they learn two ways they can learn, either statically, you can tell the path, or dynamically, they will share the path with each other. They will learn the paths 
and they will, they will maintain the best path to get from one network to another network or they will route the traffic from one network to another network. Then we have a wireless local area devices. These are becoming very very popular now. For example, like you can have you can have computers, printers, and tablets and phones, for example, to the network. The minimum requirement for wireless access to network is a device with a WLAN NIC and a wireless access point that is connected to a traditional wired network. So as you can see there on the left here, that's our wireless device, iPad or whatever. As connecting through the wireless to the access point, an access point has got a wired connection to the rest of the network. And the well, next is an access point. An access point, these devices allows wireless devices to connect to wired network. WLAN controllers, these are the devices the network administrator or network operations center uses to manage access points in large quantities. The WLAN controller automatically manages the configuration of wireless access point. Now, the WLAN controllers, for example, <clears throat> for example, if you have lots of access points around your networks, then it's, it's hard to go to each access point and give an IP address and manage it and so on. Like, for example, imagine a big building with like hundreds of access points around. Um, then that's very, very difficult. What you can do is implement these wireless LAN controllers so they will manage all the access points. So these access points are going to be lightweight, so they just need to install them and then the, you can uh, control it from WLAN controllers. But if you have only one or two access points, then you don't need, you don't need the WLAN controller. But when we're talking about 10 or more, uh, more than 10, then maybe that warrants for WLAN controller. And last thing is the firewall. These devices are network security system that monitor and control the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on the predetermined security rules. A firewall typically establishes a barrier between the trusted secure internal network and outside untrusted network. So for example, our network here from the router, the switches and then devices. This is usually, well, this is gonna be our trusted network and the network towards the internet that's untrusted network. So if the firewall, it will control the traffic, it will allow the devices from the trusted network to go to the internet and then the returning traffic from the internet to come back to your trusted network. But it will not allow usually the traffic starting from the internet to come to your network, like the source will be the internet and then coming to, network, to your network as a destination. It will not allow, that's, a, that's like a wall there. It will not allow traffic. But the returning traffic from the internet, yes, that's okay. It, it will be allowed. Thank you for watching this section. 1.3 describe the impact of infrastructure components in an enterprise network. This is a. Uh, please have a look at my other videos, and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici. Bye bye.